If one goes to business school, they learn about SWOT analysis. Can you say a few words about it, and in particular, how it pertains to dental practice owners? So Jim, thanks for being here and being an awesome sponsor of what we do. You're a fantastic dentist and human being, a doctor's disability specialist. I'm excited to learn more about the SWOT analysis. Thanks, Paul. Glad to be here. So, uh, having gone to dental school, or excuse me, I didn't go to dental school, having gone to business school, I you still about, go. You still want to go? I, yeah, you yeah. Know, I'm only 50, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. I could retire at 90 maybe. Uh, make it, so Tuition pay, was pay back a million dollars by then. That's right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay back my loans by then. <laughs> so uh, we learned about things like Monte Carlo simulations and the cost of money and things like that. Uh, but we also learned about something called SWOT analysis. And having worked with dentists over the years, I've learned that um, while they learn about things like uh, uh, occlusion and Inclusion, which apparently is not even used anymore. I looked it up um, this yeah. morning and it, it means uh, an impacted tooth. Is that true, by the way? Do you know? There's a lot of dentistry terms that are, are falling yeah. out of favor. Okay. But yeah, occlusion, emergence profile, Krebs cycle, all the okay. things that are yeah. very important to success Those out in the real that, world. That yeah, yeah. These students learn, <laughs> uh, but yet uh, something like SWOT analysis is something that perhaps they haven't heard of before. So uh, basically, today I'm happy to just describe a little bit about it and you can ask me questions if you choose. So uh, SWOT analysis stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So as you think about your practice and yourself as a dentist, both whether you actually own a practice or you're an associate or just a regular person, we all have strengths, we all have weaknesses. So um, this just, it's actually a formal analysis you can hire a consultant to do for you. Gotcha. And it can look, you can look at your practice that way. What, how does this impact, you know, dentistry is a business, but in dental school, they don't really talk to us about this, they should. Business owners using this in the, in the real world of business, where how does it impact them in a favorable way? Are they able to hire employees better? Are they able to manage better? What are some of the things that help them? Uh, yeah, I would hope so. Uh, well, one example would be if you're looking at just the strengths and weaknesses aspect of it. Uh, one piece of advice you'll hear from uh, dental consultants and, and myself included would be hire to your weaknesses. In other words, if you don't want to answer yeah. the phones, then hire that out, whether it be a service or you know a person. Um, and if you have great strengths, then really shine, have those shine. Yeah. Double down on them. Gary Bees always says that double down your strengths. You know, even just what we're doing here, some people are not video people. They want to write, you know, and some people want to do blogs and podcasts. Yeah. So it's, and I think in dentistry, I mean, you work with being a disability specialist, you work with dentists at all ages and stages of their career. Yeah, you often are called in at not the happiest of times, right? For people, you're, so you're preventive, but then sometimes reactive, you know, with the SWOT analysis, how would this help a dentist navigate their career better in general? Is there anything that they could do to kind of just make better decisions from whether it's finding a job, owning a practice, anything in between? So absolutely. Uh, and one of the aspects of this, the opportunities and threats, I think sometimes we're our own worst enemy yeah. and this between your ears is really important. So I recommend uh, a big opportunity you have as a dentist is to surround yourself with your champions. Yeah, so great, great um, whether in your personal life or, or professional life, um, you probably have a playlist you listen to when yeah. you're walking and not doing Facebook Lives. Yeah. So, it's um, only like one hour a day when that's not well, happening. Okay. Okay. It's 23 hours, one hour of rest for me. So, so, <laughs> so one example, I, um, I, I originally I was going to do this as a TED Talk, so I was going to actually have you cue some music for me. But uh, on, what, on my list, I like to have a, a song called uh, Let the Day Begin oh, nice. by The Call. So if anybody's familiar with that song, if you're not, check it out. But it really uh, it gets me pumped up and ready to take action. And I think that's an important thing for that's associates awesome. or you know practice owners. I'm going to write my own hype song. Keep your crying on the inside as a dentist. Oh, that'd be dentist. Good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think that's a. I think what's important is it speaks to dentists. Often feel like they're on an island alone. It also feels that way in their practice, and we never really get these tools to navigate these giant decisions that other people do. And I just appreciate you kind of highlighting that there's another way of building your life. You know, when you work with you, I know you also work with people with practice transitions. You know, when they are doing these big picture decisions, where are their weaknesses a lot of times? You know, have you seen like where someone is, I'm so glad I hired this consultant or thanks Jim and Tyler for thinking about this because you guys are doing disability, but you also get called on kind of like a problem solver outside of the world. Where have you seen any examples like that? Yeah, I'd say people, we're our own worst critics, but we also sometimes we're too close to the problem to really see yeah. what the problem mm -hmm. is. So having someone else to just kind of talk with and bounce the ideas off of. I personally, I'm a talker, I'm a visitor. My business partner, Tyler, is very get to the point and um, uh, he solves problems quickly and we work with our clients in half an hour blocks. 
but uh, and then if we have to talk more, then we just you know schedule another another talk, time to talk. But I do think people sometimes are too close to their own problems to really understand. Yeah, but it's just thinking outside your box. Or whether it's it's a practice management problem, a big picture decision. You know, sometimes people people dentists will buy whole other practices without really understanding if they even want to manage all of those people to do it because it feels like the right decision. But you know, you cannot return a practice out of spite. That was a Seinfeld joke, right? <laughs> so sometimes I think if you just take the time to really analyze your strengths and weaknesses prior to doing this stuff. You can save yourself quite a bit of crying inside, would you agree? I would agree with that. Um, awesome, Jim. Well, you are bring so much awesomeness to our Dental Notches community. We appreciate you coming in person, showing up online, and bringing a fun factor to everything we do. You and Tyler are both awesome. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Paul. Awesome.